Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need to know in order to absolutely dominate on test day. So as we get started today, we do have a practice question ready for you from the gastrointestinal system. This is our 99th episode, so I gotta figure out something fancy or fun to do for our 100th episode, so watch for that. Uh, just a reminder though, you can check us out over at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast where you can find everything about this show. Make sure to subscribe. You can find uh, all the cheat sheets that we've mentioned. Uh, plus, I'll be having some more goodies there as you subscribe to the podcast. So be sure to sign up there for the podcast. Again, that's ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, where you can subscribe to the all the podcast episodes and be sure not to miss a single one. So today we've got a practice question related to the gastrointestinal system. As you know, as we go through the, the FSBPT content outline, we do our best to talk about each of the systems. Today, we'll be talking about the gastrointestinal system. Now, this one does go through examination, evaluation, and intervention. So we will be talking today about interventions in the GI system. But again, only a handful of questions related to the gastrointestinal system. And uh, yeah, that's what we're here for, is to help you prepare so you can absolutely dominate on all of the systems, but certainly today we'll be talking about the gastrointestinal system. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk through the question here. A patient with gastroesophageal reflux disease is being prescribed an exercise regimen by a physical therapist. Which of the following statements is least likely to reduce symptoms? So we're talking about gastroesophageal reflux disease, a patient with GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, is being prescribed an exercise regimen by a physical therapist, which of the following statements is least likely to reduce symptoms? So we have our options. Avoid fatty foods, spicy food, and fried foods. Two, avoid high-calorie meals immediately before exercising. Three, avoid left side-lying during sleep. And four, avoid supine position immediately after meals. So we have one, avoid fatty foods, spicy food, and fried foods. Two, avoid high calorie meals immediately before exercise. Three, avoid left side lying during sleep. And four, avoid supine position immediately after meals. So in this case, clearly we're talking about precautions and things that you can educate the patient on. The correct answer here is to avoid left side lying during sleep. This is incorrect. You should instead avoid right side lying. So left side lying is important because during sleep, it puts the stomach at the lowest point possible, plus the curve in the lower esophagus tips a little bit to the left. And so in a real sense, gravity is assisting you in holding all of the stomach acid in the stomach. That being said, if you were to go into right side lying during sleep, you'd have the opposite. You'd put your stomach at a higher point than the esophagus, plus just the way that the lower esophagus bends it makes it much easier for the, the, the gastric fluid and acid to leak into the esophagus, thus exacerbating the gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now, what's interesting about GERD is that sometimes it is quite symptomatic. Sometimes it's asymptomatic. Uh, sometimes you get these extra esophageal symptoms. So this would include uh, like asthma, cough, um, uh, what is it? So this is according to Goodman's pathology for physical therapists. We've got asthma, cough, and laryngitis. And what's interesting about that is that if you have prolonged gastroesophageal reflux disease, it actually changes the tissue in the lower esophagus, putting you at a higher risk for esophageal cancer. So I thought that was interesting that the what is are typically squamous, sale, squamous cells <laughs> at the lower end of the esophagus, they, uh, they can change into... Um, uh, basically, they... They, they change cell structure, what do they call it, metastasis, where the, the cell changes, thus making it even more likely for esophageal cancer to form. And so when we're talking about esophageal cancer, this is obviously bad news. And so getting an adenoma down in the lower esophagus is, uh, is something that definitely you'd want to avoid. And so therefore, educating your patient about gastroesophageal reflux disease can be extremely helpful so that you can help prevent cancer in a very literal sense. But in this case, talking just about the symptoms, you'd want to, number one, avoid fatty or spicy foods, fried foods, avoid high calorie meals right before exercise, avoid the supine position right after meals, avoid tight clothing and valsalva maneuver, anything that would push the stomach acid into the esophagus, 
and then encourage left side lying during sleep. In fact, it's advised that you prop the patient or put a pillow to block them from rolling off of their left side so that they can stay on the side so it has to reduce the the esophageal reflux or the symptoms associated with that or what's called nocturnal uh, nocturnal reflux. All right, so there you go. A little question about gastroesophageal reflux disease and how to reduce symptoms. We talked about a bunch of that there. Uh, be sure to check out all the other podcast episodes we have related to all the other systems on the FSBPT. And as always, check out ptfinalexam.com. We have ongoing courses. We have ways to, to help you just really dominate. I know I say it a lot, but very legit. I talk to people all the time whose scores increase remarkably after having adequate preparation. And let's be honest, going through and having to redo the NPTE is, is like everyone's worst nightmare. So it's important to prepare well, uh, get the course that's right for you. Check it out at ptfinalexam.com. You can catch all of our content over there as well as our, our uh, all of our podcast episodes, ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. And as always, follow us, leave us a five-star review, help us to get the word out as we continue to help people pass the NPT. With that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. As always, happy studies. Hope you have a fabulous day. And I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks.